What's up, boys? It's me, your boy V Dog here, and back at you again. It's dragon flight time. Let's get into it. I'm loading up a new character today. I'm going to be showing you how to speed run getting a 30 day suspension in World of Warcraft. I wish I was joking, but I did actually cop a 30 day ban for this shit. Um, jokes aside, though, I don't recommend getting banned, but I am going to show you how to set up an alt with the tailoring cooldown for either Azure Weave Bolts or Chrono Cloth Bolts. This is a, an extremely powerful craft to be able to do within Dragonflight and it can net you a lot of gold. Here we are loading up on a fresh level 60 character inside of Stormwind. I do believe you can be level 58 to be able to start this process. The best thing about it is that you don't have to do any quest lines and you don't have to be level 70. There are no requirements at all other than being level 58 and having Dragonflight unlocked on your account and having an active subscription. Other than that, you want to mail your character 15,000 gold. That's about how much it costs to get this whole thing set up. And I'm taking you guys right from the start. Right from the start, right to the finish. Sorry about that. Just a bunch of fucking monster energy cans spilled all over my desk. Anyway, we're in Stormwind. We're in the portal room. Just run down here, take a left, and you can take this portal to Veldraken. You don't need to play a mage for this shit. Just take that fucking portal. Skip all the quest lines. Skip all that shit. We're getting straight into Dragonflight. Let's fucking go. This stuff is so exciting for me. I'm not even being sarcastic. Let's do this thing as well. Um, be sure to unlock all your dragon riding uh, talent points. It's really annoying that you have to do this on every single character. Maybe it's not so annoying for you guys, but it's annoying for me because I have a lot of characters. Anyway, let's click on all of these and we want to confirm that we want to spend our dragon point talents flying like... I don't know man, that shit annoys me. Anyway, I'm running two accounts um, on this video. I'm just providing commentary on this video because it's so exciting and there's so much going on. But essentially, I'll be trying to just show you the mage. I'm just going to try to show you one account doing this. Um, there we go. That's I've set myself 20,000 gold on this character, but that's just so I can cover the costs because I'm going to be sending materials to my druid that's in the group with me. Uh, the quality is a bit shit on this video, but I'll be editing, so I'll throw up the shopping list. Um, it's just a generic shopping list. It's going to be a bit over what you need, but this is just generally how many materials that I buy. So... Um, you can try and pause the video and look at how many stuff I'm buying and what I'm buying, or you can just use the shopping list, which I'm sure has been edited in the video and it's on the right side of the screen right there. Um, but essentially we're just buying all the, all the, all the reagents because we want to level tailoring up to full and we want to get every single first craft bonus. So we're going to be crafting everything at least once and I'll show you the process. Um, we just need a bit of everything really. Um, Sadly, I've done this so many times that I can remember all the reagents. Here I am buying Burnished Ink because we also want to send through a work order for a treatise. I don't know how you say that word, but it's a, it's spelt like treatise, like treatise. Treatsy? It, I, I, don't know how, um, I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, um, you don't need to know how to pronounce things to be able to play Word of Warcraft, but here I am buying some rock band leather for the same thing. Um, and in the end of this process here, I'm also going to buy my profession equipment. So this stuff's also pretty important. Um, yeah, I'm just getting, I'm just getting everything I need to level up my tailoring right here. Um, just recommend following the shopping list. I'm sorry for being so repetitive. This video will be a bit repetitive and it's also going to be quite a long video, but I can kind of explain what we're doing here. So we're essentially setting up a fresh character, much like we did in Shadowlands when we set up fresh characters for the mission table. So it's a long process, takes a, takes a lot of gold and effort and time. But once you get it, once you get it set up, once you get it going, like you don't have to do that again for that character. Like it's, it's like a one bang, like you do it once and then it's set up ready to go as a daily thing. You know, it's a daily thing. You log in, you do it, you log out. It's just the setting up process that takes a while. So that's what this video is here for you guys, just like we did with the, with the mission table. So once we get all of this set up and get it out of the way, you'll never have to do it again until you create another character. Um, but yeah, I've really got this down to a process. So I thought I've, I've nailed the, I've nailed the talent points already, um, which you guys will have to wait till the end of the video to see when we spend all of our knowledge points. Here I am buying fabric cutters. Very importantly, you want to buy the inspiration ones. So there I am hovering over inspiration. So on the auction house, you just go to the left, click profession equipment, tailoring, tools and so the spring loaded fabric cutters um the stat is a random one when a, when an engineer crafts them um 
but you just make sure you're buying the one that has inspiration on it, all right? And then for accessories, just buy one needle set and one tailor vestments. The stats on those are always constant, and you just want to make sure they're all 346. That's all you really need. Just buy the cheapest one at 346 item level. Um, I'm buying two here because of my druid, obviously. And then I'm going to buy a tailor's coat at 346. I could craft this, um, but I can't be fucked. And it's 300 gold, so who cares? Um, once again, to repeat myself, because it's quite important, when you're buying the tailoring tools, the spring-loaded draconium fabric cutters, make sure they're 346 eye level, and make sure they have inspiration on them, because we're going for an inspiration build to get today. Guys, epic. All right, so I started with 20,000. I'm buying for two characters, and I'm down to about 10,000 now. But this, these materials are enough. To, that, that's all the materials we need for the whole process. I don't think I forgot anything. I did forget something. Um, you'll see me have to go back to the auction house later. I'm just buying some spool of wilder thread here. Um, you don't have to buy these spools, but it saves you time. So I, I think I just spent, yeah, 2,000 gold on those. But if you don't want to spend that, um, you can just buy more tattered wild cloth and then spin it into the spool yourself. Um, if it sounds like I'm speaking gibberish, it's because I am. But essentially, yeah, don't forget to do this quest here as well. What I forgot to say is I needed a uh, wilder cloth bolt. So make sure you buy your wilder cloth bolt. All right, and here we go. Time to start the process soon enough. What we're going to do here is we're going to send in crafting orders. What I'm doing is I have two accounts so I can send across accounts my crafting orders at the same time. But what you guys want to do if you have just the one account, you want to log into your main send a personal crafting order to your alt that you're crafting on and you only need to send three now so blizzard actually uh, you know buffed the quest for us players um, you only have to do three tailoring crafts per week through the crafting system all right um so i'm just if it looks like i'm ever slow uh slow on this on this recording here it's because i'm i'm, I'm piloting my other account so here i am just sending myself three work orders on each account just so I can get that quest done. It's a weekly quest. You guys might know this stuff already, but I'm just going to make everything simple and straightforward for everyone to understand. There we go. We've sent in three work orders and I've sent that to both my accounts. So you guys will want to log into your main character, send in three work orders to your alt, just so you can get this weekly quest done. Obviously I can't pick up the quest yet. You need to be skill level 50 uh, to unlock the weekly quest to unlock any of the tailoring stuff it's either 25 or 50 but we're going to be going to 50 skill anyway but you can put those crafting orders in at the start just also want to point out that they should be tailoring crafting orders um, because the quest is for tailoring crafting orders so make sure it's something tailoring and make sure it's something that your alt can craft and maybe also make sure it's something that's cheap and not going to be cost you thousands of gold for a weekly tailoring quest on a shitty alt character that you don't mind so i usually send in those uh, hoods that you saw but other than that we're going to begin so it's not a very difficult process as long as you bought everything on that shopping list there i did forget something myself i was trying to do it from memory but i forgot wilder cloth bolts so i'm going to have to go buy and bolt buy some wilder cloth bolts when i need them you can also uh, craft them yourself uh, but i'm really just trying to save time here they're not very expensive wilder cloth bolts are about four to five gold each on my realm actually it's it's region wide so it's four to five gold for everyone but what we're going to do here is we're going to level to 15 tailoring just unraveling those uh tattered wilder cloth and then i'm going to send it to my droid because you never need tattered wilder cloth after that we're going to learn everything here and now we're going to do our first crafts right so i've just done my unraveling to tailoring skill 15 what we're going to do is we're going to click filter hit first craft bonus and then we're going to craft everything with a first craft bonus once and what i'm realizing here is that i don't have wilder cloth bolts so what i'm going to do is really quickly just buy some wilder cloth bolts for myself um, you can craft these but i'd recommend just buying them off the auction house so they're three gold 45 i'm going to buy 500 of them for 1600 gold um, you really don't need 500 you need <laughs> probably about 100 max um, but yeah, this shit's cheap anyway. So there we go. Now we can start. That's everything I need. So filter first craft bonus, click on everything that is in the list once, all right? Just craft everything once, unless I say otherwise. So this is just the guide. Um, I really wish there was more to it, but there's not. We're just going to click on everything once. So there's the wild cloth bolts at the top there. You can craft those if you want. You need, uh, you need like 30 to 40 of them total. So I just craft I just craft one for the first craft and then I buy the rest of the auction house. 
here I am crafting everything once. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to craft two chef's hats. So I click create all and I'm making sure I craft another chef's hat. The reason I'm doing that is because the weekly quest this week for tailors is to hand in two chef's hat. So that's the only reason I'm doing it is because I need two of them for the weekly quest. All right, here we go. Just crafting everything once. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Vibrant watercloth bolt. You want to craft two of these. Two vibrant bolts. You will need two of these for a craft later on. Here we go. Everything else, just crafting once. Just crafting once. Easy peasy. And then we check up with the tailoring trainer and make sure that everything is learnt and we can keep crafting with these first craft bonuses. There we go. We have everything we need. Just keep crafting. If you're seeing the uh, crafting results on the right there, those spools are just coming from my druid. When you're in the same party with someone, uh, the, the crafting thing is just shared. All right. Everything here is pretty straightforward. Just keep training, just keep creating. Here we go. So here you might not hit 50. So I'm at 47 out of 100. Crafting one of these gets me to 49. I'm actually gonna have to make another one of those just to get to 50. There we go. Now we're at 50 and we can keep creating. So this is the craft that requires two vibrant bolts and that's out of the way. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna craft these surveyors season hoods until we hit uh, max tailoring skill. And by max tailoring skill, I mean 65, because that's as high as you can get with just trainer recipes, is 65 tailoring. Epic. This is going to take a bit of a while. Um, we're just going to keep mass crafting these hoods. I'm actually just going to skip the video because this takes ages. Just, just click craft all and keep going until your tailoring hits 65. Pretty straightforward there, guys. And you can see the quest on the right-hand side is available now that I'm good at tailoring. Let's go. So that guy on the right there wants chef hats. That's the weekly quest. It will change every week, obviously. I crafted two chef hats already, so I can hand that in. There we go. We unlocked the major faction, Veldraken Accord, and we got some rep with the uh, Artisans Consortium. What I'm going to do here is just going to spend a very quick amount of time cleaning out my bags. What you saw me do is I equipped my reagent bag that I created in that process. And there we go. I'm going to learn um, dragon, dragon flight enchanting, just so I can disenchant all of those blue items I just created. Um, if you're watching this in the far future, you might find that disenchanting isn't as valuable as just vendoring the items. But the items vendor for about 5 gold right now. These hoods do. And yeah, I created about 20 or 30 of these hoods. And they vendor for 5 gold. And the vibrant shards that you can get from disenchanting sell for about 50 to 60 gold right now. So it's it's just it's worthwhile spending a bit of time clicking just disenchant just for that, you know, extra 30, 30 40 gold on each of those, on each of those disenchants. Here we go. I'm doing my work orders. Um, all you need to do is if you've sent it to yourself, um, make sure it's a personal work order and then you just go to your alt, click on personal crafting orders uh, and you should have those crafts there. I've done my three crafts for the week. Epic. Hope they're happy with those crafts. And what you can see me here doing is cleaning out my bags. So I'm going to skip ahead in the video here, but essentially we're just disenchanting all the stuff. We're cleaning out my bags and we're ready. We've done the crafting orders weekly we've done the chef hat weekly that one changes item every week obviously and the other weekly quest we have to do um is to the open world weekly quest which this week for me it's uh collecting null cloth we're going to go out and do that but we're going to do that while at the same time we're collecting the open world treasures for tailoring so i'll see you guys in the next segment because this the rest of this video is just me cleaning out my bags we've done pretty much everything we need to do uh, with tailoring we're ready to venture out into the open world and i'll see you guys in the next one here we go sorry a bit scuffed look I'm, I'm new at this shit here i am handing in the work orders weekly quest and then we're gonna send in my crafting order for the uh draconic tree dies of tailoring and that gives us one knowledge point per week send a public order should have all the reagents if you followed my shopping list you can put in whatever commission you want because people usually just slam those i like to do a high commission because i'm a nice guy and all i'm doing here is vendoring everything and sending it to my man um this guy here rabul you can see that um this thing's read it out so we can't actually purchase this thing right now what we're going to do is we're going to go out and do that weekly quest uh to collect null cloth and then once we hand that one in, we should have enough reputation to buy that item off of him. But all you can see me doing here is just mailing things off to my main. I'm just clearing out my bags to be fully empty. And we're going to go out into the open world. So I'll see you guys in the next one. For sure. Goodbye.
Yo, I'm back straight away. Wow, look at that. The power of editing. I'm already right here again. Let's go get some treasures, guys. So we're starting in Valdraken just where we were. I'm opening up my dragon flying just to remind everyone and to remind myself that you do need to put in all these talent points to dragon riding on every fresh character you do. And here we are at the, uh, what do they call them? The, the profession masters out in the open world. The tailoring one is inside of Valdraken, the main city here. I'm just landing here, um, showing you guys that you should put in all your points on your talent tree. There we go. And this is me on the map. This is where this profession master is. She's halfway up this tower here, just on this ledge. There we go. Just click on her, click teach me tailoring, and she'll give you 10 knowledge points. Actually, it looks like five. She'll give you five knowledge points. Let's go. What we're going to do here is we're going to go get every single treasure in the open world. There are two treasures in every zone, except for Thaldrasus, where there's one treasure. But Thaldrasus also has the profession master. All I'm doing here, it's a bit difficult because I'm using two accounts at once. Um, we're just going to fly to the Skytop Observatory um, because I want to enable passengers on my flying mount. So I'm flying towards this uh, this hill in the distance here. Um, commentary is going to be a bit sparse on this segment, but essentially I can give you guys all the waypoints and all of the zones for all of the treasures. This video is just a visual guide for how my route for getting all these treasures. So here I am at the Skytop. I'm using two accounts, so I really like to enable passengers. It just makes my life so much easier. Instead of dragon flying two mounts at the same time, I can just dragon ride one mount and have my droid ride as a passenger. So here we go. We've enabled passengers. It's time to get some treasures. So we're starting in the Waking Shores just because, um, I don't know, I feel like it was the closest. Um, this is just my route. If you guys have all this, all the... Um, all the waypoints, all the coordinates, you can you can do whatever order you want, and you can look. It's a it's a free world. You can do whatever you want. You don't even have to watch this video. You can just close this video right now and stop watching. All right, here we are, Wingrest Embassy. This is the mysterious banner. Here it is on the map. Um, I don't have the coordinates on me right now, but I'll I'll check them in the description and everything. You just click on this white flag, and there we go. That's three knowledge points. That's the first treasure. That's one out of seven treasures right there. In the waking shores. Um, there's only two treasures in the Waking Shores there. The next one is down at Dragonbane Keep. So this one's right kind of in the middle of the Dragonbane Keep area with all the elites and the guys that shoot you off your mount. So this one can be slightly difficult to get, but I'm a seasoned veteran, so I don't have any any problems getting any of these treasures. Um, <laughs> you guys will see. Um, so here we are just flying. It looks like I'm I'm too good at commentary. Um, I'm not actually playing right now. I'll admit it's pre-recorded. This is just uh footage. <laughs> I just I did this earlier because I was like I can't. There's too much going on. I can't like uh play the game, but also have like talking talking at the same time. Ah, oh, make sure to equip your shrouded hero title as well. That's the most important. So here we are at Dragonbane Keep. You guys might know this area. It's a uh, one of my favorite areas. So here I am. I'm showing you guys. If the guards are up that shoot your mount down, you want to fly in, charge into this rock area right here uh, before you hit 10 stacks because the 10 stack thing dismounts you. So you can hit the ground here on this rock ledge and it'll reset your stacks. And then just fly, fly down to this tree right here on this cliff, this burning red tree. This is where it is on the map. And it's this red flag that's hanging off the tree here, this red banner. And that's the, um, what's it even called? Itinerant Singe Fabric. Look, I can't fucking read. Anyway, let's get out of here. You might get shot down here as well, in which case I recommend you just diving into the ground. Um, sometimes you can just use your... Um, I don't even know the name of these dragon riding abilities. The one that does a, it does a barrel roll. The one goes really fast and gets you a long distance out, so sometimes you can just press that button and just get out of the danger zone very quickly. All right, here we are. We're going to go to the next zone, the Onaran Plains. There's two more treasures here. The first treasure is very annoying to get. I'll show you my method of getting this treasure. So here we are, flying on in. So it's at the PvP area slash dungeon area, uh, PvP world quest, I should say. So here I am. We're at the the fighting ring. Get a bunch of air time and then fly down, hit the ground, loot the carpet straight away. Hit ice block. Yeah, I'm just long. I'm going on my draw to hit trees. Loot this carpet straight away. These are level 70 elites, so they will literally one-shot you. Just what you, what all I did there was I used the, the speed of the mount, fly down, 
When you hit the ground, it will disorient all the enemies around your dragon mount. And you want to use that time when they're disoriented to click the carpet. That's about as much time as you get to click. That's a very hard that's the hardest treasure to get for sure. Other than that, easy peasy. Alright, we're out of there. I got it first try. I usually just uh die and get rest sickness, because rest sickness is only one minute long now, which is really cool. Anyway, on to the next treasure. It's just south of Cleverwood Hollow on the map. Here I am showing you guys. And this one's probably the easiest treasure to get. Flying on in. There we go. Catnip. So it's just this grass on the ground. Just click it, and there you go. You get three knowledge points. Just south of Clever Wind Hollow. Sorry, I have to cough really quick. Let me mute my microphone like a good street. All right, I'm back. But on to the Azure. Uh, what's this? What's this zone called? The Azure Span. Yeah, the Azure Span. That's where it is on the map. So that treasure that I clicked on, highlighted in blue, that's the next treasure. This is the second hardest one to get. Um, there aren't any level seventy elites, but there's just a lot of gnolls. There's lots of gnolls everywhere. So watch out for the gnolls. I'm gonna utilize the same method here. I'm gonna fly in with a lot of speed, a lot of lot, lot of lot of lot of speed, and I'm gonna hit the ground, disorient all the enemies, and try and use that time to click click, click on the treasure. So this one's a little white banner flag thing. Fly on in, hit the ground, click this thing, the blanket, and I didn't get it on my mage. I went onto my druid, used trees. I got it on my druid. I still need to get it on the mage. There we go. There, got the blanket, and now just run, just. Dip on out of there. Um, hopefully you don't die. I don't die because I'm too good at this game. And there we go. You might notice here it's a good zone to do the weekly quest for the Ganol cloth. If it is the Ganol cloth weekly quest when you guys do this, um, that place is very dense with Ganols. If you can clear that area without dying, um, it's a good place to do it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to spend about 10 to 15 minutes doing the weekly quest, but I don't need to show you guys the footage of that. All I'm going to do is kill some gnolls and I'm going to get 20 gnoll warm cloth and that's going to be the weekly quest done so I'm going to skip ahead in the footage um you guys might see that I'm dead yeah 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 look these are fucking alts and like shadowlands heirloom heirlooms they're not very geared um I'll just pause quickly to show you guys as well I don't know where I get this um okay it's not important but you might see this thing in my bag this um once a week for tailors at least. Well, for all professions, once a week, you can loot a, um, off of humanoids for mages, for, sorry, for tailors of humanoids, once a week you can loot these, these worn cloth, and that's one knowledge point for your profession, just a random drop, um, you might find when you're doing these weekly quests where you have to loot humanoids, um, you can get the cloth at any point, and that's just a free knowledge point. But here I am, finishing up the quest, and we're gonna to head to the next treasure. Sorry for stalling a bit, guys, but look, it's all scuffed, but we, it's content, right? It's good content. This is what I spend my time doing. Um, anyway, onto the next treasure. It's also in the Azure Spatten, and this is the second to last treasure, treasure number six. Here we go. Any moment now. So this one's just outside the Azure Archives, I think they're called. And it's just in this tower here with all the with all the CAD car mirror images. Is it CAD car? I don't know fucking know. Anyway, it's inside of this tower. Calic ghosts. Okay, it's Calic ghost mirror images. It's up. Yeah, so there it is on the map up the stairs, and it's that blue uh, bolt of intriguing blue cloth right there. That's another three points. And that's the second to last treasure. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the last treasure, which is located in Thaldrasus. So Find your way back to Thaldrazus, and we're gonna go get the last one, which is there on the map. It's in the Chromie Time area. Yep, the Temporal Conflux is the last treasure. So I'm playing Mage, so I'm just gonna teleport to Stormwind, click on the Valdrafen portal, and we're gonna fly and get that last treasure now. 
Um, so here we are, we just flew out of Veldraken. I'm just skipping ahead because it's this is taking too long. Go, go, go. Here we are, flying through Veldrazis. You guys know this area. Um, this is the temporal complex with all the all the chromie time stuff, quest line. Um, thought I might mention now because I don't mention it later. Um, this is where the chrono chrono cloth bolts get crafted right here. I'm just gonna pause the video. Hopefully you guys can see my mouse. This is the chrono cloth table right here. So if you guys are opting into chrono cloth weaving, <clears throat> sorry, I got a really bad throat today. This is the chronocloth table, and this is where you craft your daily chronocloth bolts. The annoying thing about the chronocloth bolts on a fresh character is there will be enemies on this platform um, until you complete the quest line. If you do the entire uh, chromie time quest line, I'll just show you guys the treasure. If you do the entire chrome cloth quest line, the enemies will disappear, but if you haven't done that quest line, which I don't recommend you do, honestly, um, there will be enemies here, so just watch out. Um, but this is the little treasure here. So I'm just zooming in with that UI to show you. It's a, it's the smallest treasure. Um, it's quite hard to see, but it's this little banner right here on the screen at the chromie time area. There we go, right there. What a good boy. Clicky click. Bam. Treasure done. That's all of the treasures. I'm going to show you guys one more thing. Oh, yeah, this is a good thing to show you as well. So once a week, I told you guys you can loot uh, humanoids to get a, a one knowledge point a week off of humanoids as a tailor. You can also, for any profession, this goes for any profession, you can loot treasures. And once a week, from a treasure, you will get another knowledge point. At, at random, I might say. It's RNG. But somehow I loot my first treasure on this character. This is just an Expedition Scouts pack. So it's not even a dirt pile, it's just an Expedition Scouts pack on a fresh level 60 character boom and we got the umbral bone needle that's another free knowledge point right there so if you see treasures out in the world on on your characters uh go and go and loot them i recommend it see i didn't get it on my droid um but i got it on, on my mage so that's that's all that matters because you guys are just watching the mage anyway all right so here we go i'm just showing you guys the last little bump of knowledge points it's here on the map um and this one's like a it's it's kind of a treasure, like half treasure, half mini game. It's a tailoring mini game, and when you complete it, you get five knowledge points. Um, so you see this guy in here. That's the map. That's the location on the map. But yeah, here I am. There, it's just inside this building here. So this guy here is actually on a, like a level sixty one mage. So he's clearly doing like the same stuff as I am, um, like just <laughs> crafting new characters and just getting all the knowledge points that you can right at the start. But here's the mini game here. So what the the aim of the game is to get all the threads of cloth, all the threads of spool, all the spools into the middle. So all you do is you click on all these nodes, and you make sure it goes to the middle. And once you have all the colors touching the middle, you can go to the next level. Um, so slow down and pause this video. Use as much time as you need. Um, I've done this many many times, so I know most of the answers. Um, this level here just using all those little nodes that all the other colors can be used so I'm just using all of these up so that the blue one can just fly into the middle and the red one has made it to the middle as well so all of these colors can make it right to the middle and we're ready for the next level this one's a bit boring I think this one's the one I screwed up but play it out um, so yeah it can get a bit confusing but if you just click around a bunch and play at it you can uh, you can get it done pretty quickly we're just stalling here a bit because I'm doing it on my droid. I'm just doing both characters at the same time, but you guys can't see the droid, obviously. But this is the solution. You guys didn't see me screwing it up. Oh, maybe you did. Maybe you did see me screwing it up. There we go. So you want the orange one to go upwards. Green one goes here. Doing that on my droid now. Looks like the gray one's going to go down. The red one's going to go up. And the blue one's going to go here. I think the blue's gonna go here, here. Yep, there we go. And the gray one should just go straight down. It's probably the hardest one. Just follow the video, guys, and you should be good to go. Next level, I think there's two or three more. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. This level here is just about putting the orange thread all the way around 
easy peasy and then you just put all the other colors in so you just use the orange thread to get rid of all these nodes and then you can just put every other color in there we go all right this level here is pretty fun all you want to do is you work from red go all the way around with red then do blue go all the way around with blue do gray go all the way around with gray do green all the way around with green and then for the orange cloth or for the orange spool you can just send it straight into the middle so here we go done red now we're doing blue now do gray next up is green there we go oh oh there there we go green and then orange all right i think there's two more maybe one more next level so this one's easy as well so this one just like the two levels before we're just going to use the orange spool for the entire thing just use the orange spool make sure it goes to the right make sure it loops backwards when you get to this node here and you're just going to use the orange orange thread the whole way around make sure it goes backwards again when you get to this side and look at that we've used the orange all the way around the orange should be able to use every single node on this thing and now that all the nodes are out of the way we can click on each of these colors and the puzzle should complete this might be the last level hope so because this video is taking a while any moment now i didn't already mention this puzzle gives you five knowledge points it's actually worth doing oh this is the last puzzle so the only thing i remember about this puzzle is that the green has to use this node and the orange has to use this node red has to use that one blue has to use that one and the gray wants to use this one so red goes up blue goes up to the left blue goes uh yeah just follow the video i don't know why i'm trying to explain it when you guys can just click on just follow the video you got all the answers right here but yeah five knowledge points for getting this one done I'm doing it on two accounts at the same time and the funniest thing about this video is i get all this shit done easy peasy and i get it done quicker than that other mage that was there so look look not everything's a competition except when i'm doing it all right um it's a competition so i beat the other guy that's the last puzzle boom that's the solution right there and we're done right yep we're done easy so look that guy's still going he sucks and that's the bolt five knowledge points just for that so what we're going to do now guys is we're going to head back to the main city we're going to use all of our knowledge points and we're going to spec into the build that we want and we're going to be done essentially we've got all the knowledge points possible um I'm going to edit in but don't forget when you hand in that weekly quest with the null cloth um you know i kind of skipped myself doing it in this video but there's always a weekly open world quest to go do you don't have to do it it takes a long time but it's three points what i recommend doing is when you first create the character to do tailoring i do it i do it once it's a weekly quest i just do it the one time and then i never do it again on that character um it's just three points it's three points per week um, in theory, but I just I just do it the one time. So I've done my null cloth. I'm gonna fly in here, and just very quickly, um, before I cut this video out, I want to remind you guys that you hand in that weekly null cloth quest. Um, the good reason for doing it is it's artisan cons artisans consortium rep, um, and you can speak to Rabul. Um, so this video has just started again from the start. A bit messy, I'm sorry, but this Rabul here, this little um, fairy, I forgot what they're called. Volpera, that's the one. This guy. You hand in your, null, your weekly open world quest, and that will give you enough reputation to be able to speak to Rabul, and he'll offer you an item for 100 metal that gives you 10 knowledge points, which is epic. And it's just a huge amount of knowledge points, so we want to do that one open world quest once, uh, the null cloth here, so I've skipped back to the start of the video, but Rebull gives you that item for 10 knowledge points, so epic. Make sure you go and do that, because I forgot to show you in the video, but don't forget to do that for 10 knowledge points. Talk to Rebull. Epic. All right, see you guys in the next segment. Yeah, what up? It's your boy Future V Dog here. We've just done our swoop of all the treasures in the Dragon Isles. I'm going to go ahead and click on all of these. I think I had 34 points before doing any of these treasures here. Um, so we'll see how many we get in total. Um, obviously, uh, for me, it changes every time I do new characters. Some get more points, some get less points. 
but I think we're aiming for around 60 to 65 on the jump. So let's see what we get here. It's looking like 63. Here we go, 63 knowledge points. Cool. So first of all, doesn't matter which one you're doing, but we're going to start with tailing ma tailoring mastery here. Unlock this tree and we're going to put in 10 points so that we can learn our first sub-specialization. So I'm going to apply 10 points here. It should go to here and then we can choose a tree. So I'm going to choose this one to the right. It's called shrewd stitchery. And what we do is we learn the specialization and we put every single knowledge point that we can into it. So what this tree is here is it's the inspiration tree. So every single node is giving good shit with inspiration, including these big capstones, which actually improve how much uh, bonus skill inspiration gives. So this one gives an additional 10%, another 10%, and then another 25%. So we're going to hit apply there. That's a total of 40 points we just spent. And now we're going to go to Draconic Needlework. So the best thing about this build, and with all of these Chrono Cloth and Azure Weave cooldowns, is that this tree on its own, as soon as you unlock it, like I've just done, you can, the first node here lets you learn your sub-specialization. So do not put any points into this main tree at all. Here that you can actually put five points into this first tree. I was just really trying to emphasize not to do more than that. So the first node here actually gives you five inspiration, which is actually quite good. So I'd recommend, um, after you do your 15 points here, um, maybe after you get your first multi-craft node, Essentially, I've done this on my other characters. Just put five points into this top tree because five inspiration for the inspiration build It's very good um, What you're gonna do is you're gonna choose between Azure Weave and or Chrono Cloth You're gonna do one of the two. You're not gonna do both of them for one character You do one side of the tree for this character I've decided to do Azure Weave, but Chrono Cloth is just as good. They're both the same cooldown but they are worth different values in the market. So you might want to check on your realm which price, um, maybe maybe which one has more supply, which one has less supply, maybe which one's worth more gold, which one maybe, you know, my main tailor can use Azure Weave to make Chrono Cloth, uh, sorry, I said Chrono Cloth, but my main can use Azure Weave to make Azure Weave backpacks and those sell for a bit of profit. So Azure Weave is useful for my tailor, but I would recommend for you guys that you just list these bolts straight up on the auction house. I'm going to go for Azure Weave here, but you're very welcome to do Chrono Cloth. It's going to be the exact same points in the same places, no matter which side. So the tree is pretty much like mirrored on each side of the tree. Just choose a side and go for it. I'm going for Azure Weave here. I've got 23 points. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get to the sub-specialization. So put as many points as you can up to 15. All right. You might not get all the way here, depending on how you went with your, with your, um, treasures and shit but let's go for 15 into here we're going to learn the sub-specialization and we're going to go all the way down to the bottom of the tree learn the bottom of the tree and just max this thing out just use all your points you have and hit apply cool now my tailorer is ready so we're specced into inspiration and we're specced into azure weave um so obviously as we get more points we can increase multi-craft and reduce the cooldown of the of the bolts and then if, if we put more into here, we can unlock some inspiration. But these are all just nice bonuses, really. The main thing about this build is putting these 10 and 30 points. This 30 points is what's going to make you all your gold. Just remember, guys, um, sorry for repeating myself so much. Um, we are using the... Oh, this one says multi-craft. It's meant to actually be inspiration. Um, I've done this video in a weird order, but essentially this tool here, you just buy it off the auction house and you make sure it has inspiration on it. So it's called Fabric Cutters. Um, yeah, well, it's down to 200 gold now. Inspiration, so I'm gonna buy this one because it has inspiration on it. Everything we do is all about inspiration. Cool. So I'm gonna cut the video here and I'm gonna travel to the loom. So you might notice when you learn as you're weaving Chrono Cloth, it'll show up in your first craft bonus because you've never crafted it before requires as your loom and you'll notice for the chrono cloth one it will say requires the chrono cloth loom so you actually have to travel out to these special looms in the open world to be able to it's it's a crafting table for this profession but it's out in the open world so you actually have to travel there to craft these bolts it's just a bit of you know it's quite fun um blizzard adding all this stuff to the game so the chrono cloth one is where we got this treasure here the uh the little dragon banner um, it's just across from there. I might edit in some footage depending on how much effort I put into this video. This is where the Chrono, 
chrono cloth bolts get crafted right here. I'm just going to pause the video. Hopefully you guys can see my mouse. This is the chrono cloth table right here. So if you guys are opting into chrono cloth weaving, <clears throat> sorry, I got a really bad throat today. This is the chrono cloth table, and this is where you craft your daily chrono cloth bolts. This character we went into Azure Weave, so we actually want to travel down here to the Azure archives. So I'm going to cut the video here to save some travel time, but essentially I'll meet you guys at the Azure archives and we will craft an Azure Weave bolt and we're almost done. So see you there guys. Alright guys, we're just flying on into the Azure archives. You might remember this from the main campaign story, or you might not, depending on how fast you rushed the whole thing. I'm just going to grab the flight point here real quick and go for this textiles um, build. Just... So you can, uh, the tailoring mastery unlocks the inspiration node here. This is all inspiration, but under textiles, you can actually go textiles, put five points here, and it actually costs you less points. So you got you got to put five points here and then 20 points here. So that's a total of 25. Whereas this one takes 10 and 30, which is a total of 40. And what this build here unlocks is it's a weaving build. So it specializes in um, multi-crafting your weaves um, into bolts. So every node here, this actually gives you inspiration. This one gives you multi-craft. This one gives you inspiration. This one gives you plus 40 multi-craft. So that's actually a lot of multi-craft, but I wouldn't recommend this build. I actually prefer inspiration. I'm going to check the auction house very quickly here. Just to prove a point, let's search as your bolt. So you can see here that the rank three bolt is actually worth 21,000 gold, whereas the rank one and two bolts are only worth 5.8 thousand gold. So what's happening here is um, the supply is a lot lower for these bolts and no one can really uh, you know, pump the auction house full of these bolts um, as to drop the price because they're quite rare and they're quite useful for everyone. There's only 113 and I've been known to craft over 120 uh, per day. Uh, back when I was exploiting. But anyway, we actually prefer inspiration over multi-craft. So if you multi-craft two rank twos, that's gonna equal about 12,000 gold. Whereas if we get an inspiration proc and we craft a rank three, that's gonna equal 21,000 gold. So you're needing about 9,000 gold over, so an inspiration proc grants you about 9,000 extra gold over a multi-craft proc. Hope that makes sense. I know it's all a bit confusing with the new system, guys. Equip my inspiration uh, thingy here. So just to remind everyone, my profession equipment is these two, 346, item level 346, item level 346. Uh, these stats don't change, they're always the same, but this one you, you get to choose uh, off the auction house and you want to go for the inspiration, just make it 346 and it has inspiration. All right, we're almost ready to go. I'm just needing to trade myself some gold because I've bankrupted myself learning all these professions. Um, I'll just give myself 15,000 gold here. Um, and yeah, I'll show you how to craft your bolts. So this is a daily cooldown, obviously. Um, and the ingredients are Awakened Order, Awakened Frost for a, an Azure Weave. And for a Chrono Cloth Bolt, it's, you know, you guys can check this this book. It's pretty fucking straightforward. It's, it's Awakened Frost and Order for an Azure Weave and it's Awakened Order and Air for the Chrono Cloth. And, you, and then you want to use Rank 3 uh, Vibrant Bolts. So what we're going to do here is we're going to search Rousing. Um, I'll just show you to prove a point as well. Rousing Order is 275 for one of them. And Awakened Order is 2,900. See, so we can save 200 gold instead of buying an awakened order we can buy 10 rousing order so this costs 2750 it actually cost me less 2774 oh look see someone's someone's uh, made it cheaper for us so we did actually save some gold there and then let's check for frost so the frost is 2169 and awakened frost is um 218 so they're about the same price i'm just going to buy this one because they're pretty similar i'm going to lose maybe one or two gold by buying this thing here and then just as i said before you can buy bolts at full price or you might have another tailor that can craft these at a reduced cost i'm just going to buy three of these here because you need three of them for one craft so let's buy three just a reminder use the rank three craft on these bolts it is definitely worth paying uh 50 extra gold for these bolts um because quality is everything and especially when for inspiration so we've got our materials here um, I get bugs with my thing when I use my reagent bag. So I'm here on the map at the Azure Archives. Um, I might just show you guys very quickly before we do the craft. The mailbox is here, we just use that mailbox, and there is actually an inn here uh, 
for people that want to use it. So I'm going to set my Hearthstone here, just in case I need it. All right. Just while I'm walking to the table, I'll say what's the case here. So this little hub for the Chronocloth Bolt is actually locked behind a little quest line. And, and the, it's the Chromie Time quest line. Um, so it's, it's full of a bunch of enemies, but if you do the quest line, the enemies will go away and it unlocks a Hearthstone in and a... Now the mailbox is always there. The mailbox is always there, but if you want the Hearthstone location, you have to do the quest line. And if you want to not be enemies there, you also have to do the quest line. But what I do on my characters is I can't be fucked. So all I do is I set my Hearthstone to Beldraken and then I fly there on my mount every time because um, I don't want to do the quest line on all my characters. So here we go. You might have Rising Frost, make sure to turn it into an Awakened. And there we go. We have one craft available. It's a first craft bonus. One craft available of 20. We are at the minimum rank here of uh, expected quality, two stars. Um, but then you read this inspiration, we have a 24% chance because we have 187 inspiration. So it's actually a 23.7% chance to be inspired, crafting this recipe with 213 bonus skill. So 215 plus 213 is um, quick maths. It's greater than 425, that's for sure. So I've only got one craft here. I really hope it works for this video. We're going to try and hit a rank 3 bolt on a fresh... <laughs> I don't, I don't know what that noise was, I'm so sorry. <sighs> We're going to try hit the rank 3 bolt on a fresh 60, straight from Stormwind, fresh created like an hour ago. We're going to try and hit this on the first try. Let's go, rank 3 boys, for the boys. Let's fucking go. Oh, oh what a great YouTuber I am. That is a rank 3 Azure Weave bolt right there. That is worth 21,000 gold. Holy shit, it actually worked on stream. Just so you guys know I'm not lying. Look, this thing is worth 21,000 gold and it will sell instantly. Look, I'm gonna do it on stream. I'm gonna list this thing up and it's gonna sell straight away. Okay, really quickly, I just thought I'd show you guys. Um, it's been about 30 seconds and this thing's already sold. Uh, 21,000 gold, all right. Um, 21,000 gold, right there. Easy as frick, all right. And just remember, I'll show you guys how much we paid for it. We spent, uh, we bought one of these, so that's 3,000 gold. We spent one of these, that's 200 gold, so we're at uh, 3.2k. And then we bought three bolts, which is 300 gold. So we spent about 3.5,000 gold and we made 21,000 gold. And that's off one bolt, one rank three bolt. We made 18,000 gold or 17.5 if you want to round it it'd be particular about it. we made 17 point that 17.5 thousand gold off one bolt you can guys can see why i'm so fucking excited about tailoring i love this shit so much it's like you put all this effort in and you get rewarded you know and it's so like it requires so much effort that not everyone's going to do it but the people that do go out of their way to do it get rewarded you get your gold and you hopefully don't get banned i'll show you guys what happened for all of us who got banned so as you might see here, it says cooldown remaining, 12 hours, 24 minutes. So that's how long until I get my next one charge and I can do my next single craft. Now what happened here is, I'll see if I can prove a point. If you ever teleported or used a hearthstone or anything involving a loading screen at all in game on a character with depleted charges, if you ever got a loading screen like this, it would reset the charges. So I'll show you what happens. You go here, we're gonna go back to the table and check my charges. So what was happening is there were some people who were doing it intentionally, might have been me, not gonna incriminate myself, I might have abused this exploit in game, but you know, people get loading screens all the time when they're playing, you know, you're queuing for dungeons, you're queuing for battlegrounds, you know, you're going into M+, you're getting load screens all the time, you, maybe you log in and out, you go to play an ult, come back to this character to craft some bolts, and then you go, oh look at that, you know, it's, it's been a couple of hours, you know, I'm specced into this tree here, which, um, notes that I, you know, some people get this note at the end, further improve the cooldown, um, get your bolts more quickly. And I think there's one here as well, maybe, no. The first node says decrease the cooldown and the last node says decrease the cooldown. So some people would go here, come back to their table and would you look at that, I have 10 crafts available. Do not do this, you will get banned, all right? I'm going to log out of this character and I'm not going to craft. I actually don't want my account to be banned because I like to play this game. Um, I was just, 
I was actually just trying to see if it was still in the game, but yeah, the exploit is still in the game. So you can just use a hearthstone, you can use anything that gives you a loading screen, and it will reset all charges on the bolts. So do not do that. Um, they are giving out 30 day bans for this shit. Just do your crafts like once a day, and that's all you want to do. Alright, I've been talking for long enough. This segment's been a whole 10 minutes, but um, I'm really glad it worked out, guys. Um, have fun out there. It's the new mission table. Um, bit complicated, but just do all these points like I did, and then you too can craft a rank 3 bolt on your first try. Alright, guys, I'll see you guys next time when I think of something else to exploit in game for the gold economy. V Dog out. Have a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. See you next time. Peace.